I have to make a confession. I, I, my reading of blogs is very small. I, uh, I try and uh, do, I try and get out there and, and read other people's blogs, but I definitely don't know everything that's going on out there. So, but what I have seen is again people who are doing amazing things. So if you, um, I don't know, do you guys know Chris Gillibo? Uh, the Art of Nonconformity? Yeah. You have his book? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Chris is a, a friend of mine um, that I only met recently, but he's a, a blogging friend of mine. I'm going to his conference in Portland, Oregon uh, in June. He's someone who's, who's remarkable. He uh, first of all started by traveling the world and then doing these kind of humanitarian projects in other countries, poor countries. And then he would sell ebooks and donate, you know, 90% of his proceeds to these these uh, amazing projects, building schools in Africa, things like that. So Chris is someone who I always point to as someone who's doing something amazing. You know, he, again, traveling the world. People want to travel the world. I, you know, this is my first time in Europe, so I, reading his exploits of traveling the world, I lived vicariously through him, and it was always amazing to read read his stuff, um, doing amazing things for other people who are in need. That's amazing. Um, but there, I mean, you don't need to travel the world. You don't need to do humanitarian projects. Uh, I've seen other people, I'm trying to think of, of what they did that was so amazing, but it was just, they, they do things that are different. They, they realize that their lives are kind of boring and routine, and they're doing the same things that everyone else are doing, you know, everyone else is doing. And they decide, I want to change. I want to get out of this, job that I'm doing, I want to stop, you know, the, the rat race, I want to stop eating all this junk food, or, or whatever it is they do, and they do something amazing. If you uh, do what I do and study blogs and study the media, and, and ask yourself, why is this person's story interesting? And so you might see people in the newspaper or on, on different websites and say, and they're being highlighted for some reason. I just saw this guy, you guys, are, you guys know... Who's the guy who did the, that book called Blink? Um, Gladwell. So he did a, a book called Outliers, where he talked about uh, you need to do something for 10,000 hours in order to become great at it. And so this other guy saw that and said, I'm going to test that. And so he decided to become a professional golfer. And uh, he sucks at golfing. So it was a, a major journey for him. So, and he's, he's a lot better now. And you can imagine after doing it for a year and a thousand hours, you'd be a lot better. This got picked up in a, in a newspaper, I forgot which one, but it was a major uh, article. And so, doing something like that was interesting. He decided to do something different. He was, had failed at a whole bunch of things in his life. But he decided to try this. He got an idea from Malcolm Gladwell and, and said, let's, let's see what happens. Let's do some kind of an experiment in your life. And, and see what the results are. That's interesting, and that's what people are gonna are gonna want to read. So do something. If you're not, if you feel like you're not doing anything different, uh, look for an idea and just give it a try. You come from anywhere. Any other questions? Yes. You can yell it out if you want to. Yeah, cool. Neil, you were saying about coming. Sure. Yeah. So I, I had done freelance writing for magazines and newspapers, so I, I was, yeah, but you don't need to, I mean, that's just what I was doing at the time, but I, what, I was doing it for print publications, and I kind of feel, felt like they were on the way out. Um, print, print was dying at the time, and I still think it is. But anyway, the, I decided to try and move online, and I wanted to, there's, there's several reasons for that. One was for money. I wanted to you know, make money online uh, and doing things that I like doing. Instead of writing things that other people told me to write, I wanted to write things that I wanted to write. So I decided to freelance with three different blogs. And the other reason was getting my name out there was, was a good thing. So again, it was almost like an advertisement. Writing for a major blog that had 20,000 readers was, was great. I got my name in front of 20,000 people who had never heard of me before. So what I did, the way I did it was I went and looked for blogs that had a large readership, number one. Number two, had readers who might be interested in my stuff. And number three, hired freelancers.
So I would notice, you know, if it was just one person, like my, one of my favorite guys was J.D. Roth of Get Rich Slowly. Uh, it, it was just him. He didn't have any freelancers at the time. Now he does. But if it was a whole bunch of writers, I would say, oh, maybe this is, they, maybe they hire their writers. So I would go and look at their, you know, about page or whatever and, and find out if they were hiring or if they hired freelancers. And if they did, I would just email the, the uh, editor and say, I'm Leo, I was blogs and habits. I, I would link to that. And I've gotten a few readers, I blog about this kind of stuff, and I'd love to write for you. And so I started low, uh, low pay, I think I started like $20 an article. Um, but I eventually started raising my rates as, after I got five different publications doing that, uh, $20 an article, I would start to demand higher pay for every new new blog. So the next one I demanded like 30 or 40, and then I would drop one of the ones who wouldn't give me more. And eventually I got up to like 100 some dollars per article. Um, so that was, it became a, a decent source of income. Eventually I couldn't keep up with it. It was five posts a week for different blogs, plus the three or four guest posts I was doing a week, plus like five or six post for my own blog, and that was a crazy schedule. So anyway, did that answer the question? Uh, could you give us your experience of predictions about the media, like video, audio, Twitter? Okay, so the question is my predictions? Yeah, yeah I'm a horrible prognosticator. I apologize, but I'll, I'll throw some wild guesses out into the air. Predictions for other media like video, Twitter, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, I think they're doing pretty well. I think they will continue to. I mean, I, I definitely, like I said, I think print is dying. And it's, I actually used to work in the print media. I was a journalist and editor of a sports, I mean, I was on Guam, so it's not really a, a lot to brag about. But it was, uh, I was the editor of the sports section and then later a uh, news journalist. And so, I love, Newspapers. I love holding a newspaper in my hand. I don't read newspapers anymore. I still love them. I like to look at them from afar. So the uh, you know I, I think that print is dying, and so the idea, the question is, where are we going? The print is dying. You know, I, I don't think the New York Times or, or any of the major newspapers here, the London Times, have, have figured that out yet. Uh, I think they're they're trying to hold on to the old media models, and they don't realize that people are doing things differently these days. So I actually don't know where it's going, but I do know what people are doing more of, and they're actually reading less of uh, blogs than they did when I started. So I think they're definitely going for shorter forms. People are more distracted than ever before. Uh, Twitter is definitely a big one. Facebook is definitely another one. And the thing about these things is they are actually blogs in a smaller form. They're micro blogs. And so, People can get out a blog post on Twitter in a few seconds, as opposed to having to write a full post. But I think that the principles that apply to them are the same. And so when I was saying be really useful, be solve people's problems, you need to do that on Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, and whatever, wherever the new, you know, even YouTube and, and what, Vimeo and all of these other video platforms, the same principles apply. People have problems and you've solved them in your life. You, whether again it's it's entertainment or doing something in your personal life that, that people want to do, and you just need to do that on Twitter as well. And so Twitter, I, I use. I'm not as as big a fan um, a user as, as a lot of people where I post. I don't post like 20 times a day or anything like that. Basically, once or twice a day. But I try and post things that I think are worth reading. I don't always succeed. I actually fail 90 percent of the time. But if I try and I post things that are either interesting, that are useful, solve people's problems, that link to something else that's useful or interesting, that I answer people's questions on Twitter. I, I think, again, no matter what media that we're going to be using in the next 10 years, the same principles will apply uh, as a view to blog. I hope that helps. Sure. I can do 10 more if you want. But...